Apple claims that their newest MacBook Pros last longer than all the generations that came before them. In other words, they're incredible and they're the best Macs we've ever made. Okay, that was that was bad. Uh, I'm just used to Tim Cook saying it all the time, so it just kind of rolls off the tongue. So I've already done some performance tests on these new MacBooks here, the M4 Max, the M4 Pro, and the M4, and now it's time to kill them with my battery test. I was interested about MacBooks specifically here because if you're not familiar with MacBooks, they have different power levels or power modes, but they're not all the same. The M4 Pro and the M4 Max, they allow you to set the energy mode to low power, automatic, or high power. High power is what I use. The M4 model does not have that kind of mode. They have low power mode and you can enable it or disable it, pick whatever you want. Just not high power mode, that's all. Can't have that, gotta pay more for that one. So there's a couple of questions I had here to answer for myself and for you, and that's how long do they last, right? But not just that, how long do they last under different power modes? And I'm pretty excited to take a look at the results here. I've also had a bunch of coffee, if you couldn't tell. I ran my automated tests for a few nights in a row now, and finally I got it right, so now we're gonna take a look at that. By the way, this is the same test that I wrote to simulate a real software developer's activities in half an hour chunks. The code loops around in half an hour chunks. There's copying files, there's building code, there's writing code, browsing documents, documentation, there's compilation of code and running interpreted code as well, using productivity tools like Notion and Todoist, and of course, what day will be complete without watching some YouTube. Because we're not a bunch of drones, we need to do some downtime too. So I automated this test and it runs on both Mac OS and Windows so I can test both systems and compare them. And that's precisely what I've been doing with the laptops I've been getting in here for the last few months, starting with the Snapdragon X Elite laptops earlier in the summer. I mentioned those specifically because they're still reigning champions, especially that um, Snapdragon X Plus, which is the longest lasting machine in my test. And it even beat out the MacBooks at that time. It beat out the Luna Lake machine I had in here and the long lasting AMD Ryzen Zen 5. First stop is the high performance mode test. Now remember that the M4 does not have high performance mode. I myself prefer high performance mode because these batteries last such a long time anyway that they always outlast my workday. So why would I decrease performance if I have high performance mode available? That's just my line of thinking. And the 16 inch M4 Max bites the dust first, followed by the M4 quickly after that. That's unexpected. M4 Pro holding on. Oh. There it goes, M4 Pro is done too. Now, for the other side of the coin, we have low performance on the M4, but on the Pro and the Max, we have something called automatic, which I find kind of interesting now because, well, this is the default. This is what most people that buy the machine are going to keep it at. They're gonna take it out of the box and keep it on default. At least most people will. Of course, the 16 inch M4 Max dies first. Even with that bigger battery, that screen and that chip are just maybe too much for it. M4 Pro this time follows suit. I think that's the appropriate order here. And what's going on with this one? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. This thing is still alive? How many hours is that? Okay, I'm reconsidering my, uh, my options here. Oh, finally. Wow. Even though I like to use my machine in high performance mode, I can't help but wonder on those long trips when I'm in between wall outlets for an extended period of time, should I be switching to low performance mode to extend the battery life just a bit more? I mean, most of the time, what am I doing? I'm writing some code or doing some email. Why the heck would I need high performance mode during those times? Well, maybe. But what really interests me is how much of a hit are we taking by switching to low performance mode? And this is something new that I haven't really been testing on the channel at all. So I'm really curious to find this out. Write down your percentage hit guesses in the comments below, but no cheating. This is the Ugreen Uno wireless power bank, and it's part of the Ugreen Uno series of fast and fun charging accessories for your iPhone. With a unique robot design and an intelligent TFT display, it brings fun to charging with playful status emojis that change during use. This power bank is Qi2 certified, delivering 15 watts super magnetic charging with a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity, enough to fully charge an iPhone 16 Pro up to 1.6 times. Plus, it's foldable design doubles as a wireless charging stand, perfect for desk setups or on-the-go use. Now meet the Ugreen Uno charger that delivers up to 100 watts of power. It charges a 16-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 47% in just 30 minutes and an iPhone 16 from 0 to 57% in just 30 minutes. And with three USB-C ports and one USB-A port, you can power up four devices simultaneously, covering all your Apple needs. The Ugreen Uno series isn't just about chargers. It's a full lineup of fun and fast charging solutions, including power banks, hubs, and even cables. So check out the Ugreen Uno series. It's your go-to accessories for the ultimate iPhone experience. Links are in the description.
Now let's look at the charts and compare this to the previous models I've tested. It's getting a little busy here. Orange is the MacBook Pro 14 M4, and you can see that line is not exactly linear like some of the other ones. The line is not linear. Um, it's a little curved, okay? So right around here, around 240 minutes, we experience a much faster battery drain. By the way, this is the high performance mode on the Max and the Pro, but on the M4, we're specifying to never put it in low power mode. Now the M4 Pro is this green one, and that one lasted the longest. That outlasted the X Plus. We have a new champion in high performance mode. This is the M4 Pro, wow. Impressive. It outlasted the Surface Laptop 7, the X Plus. It outlasted the MacBook Air 13 with the M3 chip in it. And it outlasted the Surface Laptop 7 with the X Elite. Wow, M4 Max did pretty well too, matching those other ones. You can see the lines are not exactly aligned. 330 minutes is the last measurement taken, but after that, at some point, it hits 0% before it gets to 360. So somewhere between th 330 and 360 is when that machine dies. Some of them last a few minutes longer than other ones. Like the X Elite did last a little bit longer than the M4 Max, which is that pink line right there. If you have suggestions on better plotting libraries, let me no. This is my other chart with the balanced power plans on Windows and on the Mac it would be equivalent to the automatic setting. This is the default that the machine comes with. But on the M4 here this is set to low power mode and it does not beat out the X Plus in the ProArt PZ13. That's the lowest X Plus variant with uh, 8 cores in that machine. It comes close. One of the longest lasting tests I've ever done. 900 minutes. That's crazy. The M4 Pro and the M4 Max both did not last that much longer than in high performance mode. Interesting. Now let's take a look at the efficiency of these machines in relation to the other ones. Since these machines do some work, I measure the amount of work they do and compare that to the time that the machine lasts. And that's where the efficiency metric is coming from. M4 Max, not super great. This is on high performance mode, of course. Uh, we're about the same as the VivoBook S15X Elite here. And Surface laptops dominate the efficiency here. MacBook Air M3 is pretty good. And here are the two other M4 chips, the M4 Pro, Pretty nice efficiency there. Of course, it lasted a really long time, but it didn't do as much work as the X Elite, for example, up here. And there's the M4, still pretty decent. Looking at the balanced power mode, or in the M4's case, low power mode, it looks like the M4 Pro and the M4 Max are not doing that great here in efficiency, especially compared to the Ryzen AI 9 and the Core Ultra 7 Series 2 here. Finally, I'm really curious how these machines actually do on the lower performance mode level because I've already done the Xcode benchmark. You might have caught my video uh, last week and that was on high power mode. The Max is on high power and the Pro is on high power as well. And this is exactly how I ran Xcode benchmark. I happen to be the first one that did it. So I did a pull request of my results to the actual repository. The M4 MacBook Pro didn't do that great. 141 seconds, not terrible. For reference, the M2 Max, my daily driver for the past two years, got 127 seconds. The M4 Pro MacBook Pro got 94.9 seconds. And I think the fastest time ever was the M4 Max with 81.3 seconds. Now, my friends, we're gonna switch to low power mode on all three of these machines. And you know what, the, the screen dims a bit. I, I don't like that, but I'm gonna keep it that way. Even though I would override that personally, especially in a bright environment like this, I'd wanna crank it up higher, but it's low power mode. Even the battery turns nice and yellow. Look at that to let you know that, hey, you're saving some battery. Oh, I can do it right from there, okay. Good to know. I told you I never switch out of high power mode. Let's run this thing. I usually have a, a hand or two helping me out here, but today I don't. Sorry, folks. Sorry to disappoint. It's in the previous video. You can check it out. By the way, you've been submitting some interesting names for that thing that I cannot mention. Now, if you're new here, one thing I want to mention about this test is it is a compilation, a code compilation, and it uses a lot of uh, dependencies. So it's a pretty fairly large project, I'd say, compared to most projects out there. And this is a multi-core one, so it's going to use more cores. This is why the M4 Max with the most cores is going to win. I don't have any question about that. The M4 Pro, less cores, this is the 14 core version, is going to do slightly worse. And finally, the M4 with the least amount of cores, with 10, is going to do the worst. It does not mean these machines are worse than the other ones. It's a matter of waiting between, I don't know, 30 seconds 
to a minute more for a pretty large build, something you typically will not be doing. And what else you won't be typically doing? Compilations like this. Yes, it's good to know how long something like this would take, especially if you do this every day and you build several times a day. Some people have that built into their workflow, but a lot of developers don't. If you're doing web applications, you're working with mostly single core stuff. You do have a transpilation step a lot of the times these days, and that may include several cores, but also those workflows are nowadays with modern frameworks optimized so that they only submit changes which are not like this at all. They're very small, tiny little transpilations that only update changes in the browser as you're developing. Okay, I do have some initial results on these two machines and we're still waiting for the M4. <laughs> I hope it gets there soon. These numbers are significantly slower than previous, of course. And you know what? The difference between between M4 Max and the M4 Pro is not that much anymore. 156 seconds on the M4 Max, still the fastest, 163 on the M4 Pro. Impressive. We're talking about two less cores here, so yeah, it's gonna be slower, but it's not that much slower. And finally, M4 is done, 247 seconds over there, quite a bit slower. We got 10 cores over there. That's eight less performance cores than the M4 Max and six less performance cores than the M4 Pro. So yeah, low power mode will definitely affect your builds in that way. But when you're writing code, when you're checking email, probably when you're even watching videos and when you're doing productivity stuff, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep that in mind. I know where the menu is now and I'm gonna start thinking about it next time I'm on a long flight. How about you? Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I will see you next time.